Welcome back to Glamour Unfiltered, hosted by me, Josh Smith. And today we're joined by the queen of sex education, Amy Lou Wood. That's quite a controversial statement to make, Josh. Is it? The queen. <laughs> the queen. One of the queens. Subjective. 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 One of the Asterix. subjective queens. One of the subjective queens. <laughs> you said this thing to me last year when we met, when you first got this character, and you said it was the most liberating experience ever because it's your first on-screen character, mm -hmm. and then you're having a sex scene, and you're like, you have to get, and you like literally said, and I literally just got my tits out. You did it with a bang, got my tits out. Yeah. What has your own relationship with body image been like in order for you to get to that situation where you can be like, yes, I'm totally comfortable to do this? I knew it wasn't gratuitous and I knew it was always helping the story along and because I wanted to tell the story as honestly and as well as I could, I, it kind of gave me that really great push to go, no, I'm going to fucking do it, I'm go going to do it and it was such a safe environment from the get-go with those sex scenes that it, it just felt like the perfect opportunity to challenge myself because I never would have thought in a million years that I would be able to do that. Like I have suffered with body dysmorphia my whole life. So I, I remember that day thinking, just think of, and, and also in my masturbation montage, I was like, just think, cause all the unflattering angles. I mean, knowing that the is not really from a great angle uh, basis. No, is it? and I remember, I remember thinking, yeah, but think, think of the young girls mm. that are gonna be watching this and going, oh, thank God. That's what I do, or, you know, it's not, we don't always look perfect. You know, I remember before the first sex scene, I thought, right, okay, I'll start eating, I'll start just eating salads every day. And I just didn't. And, and making, that was such a turning point for me, was making that decision to go, actually, I'm not gonna alter how my body looks before this scene, because this is how my body looks. Mm. And that is a terrifying thing, but having a character as well, helps you a lot with that because you go well Amy looks like this I am Amy I am mm. originating this character this is who she is and this is what she looks like and I'm just going to own that and that helped me so much mm. I would be the type that you know when, I, when you're younger and I just watched eighth grade when she goes to the pool party and she's just so I hated pool parties all of that stuff and you know those girls that would just be so confident oh, yeah. they whip off their tops and they'd be in their little bikinis and I would just be like, I'm gonna wear a t-shirt. And, and even when I was at my absolute skinniest, I would still be terrified to ever show parts of my body that I didn't think were perfect. And I think learning that perfection doesn't exist and that beauty lies in those flaws and those individualities and those nuances is just the most liberating thing mm. ever because you're striving for something that doesn't exist your whole life. It doesn't actually exist. This goal is completely unachievable because you're never gonna look to you what you think perfect is until you just go, oh, I am. The way I am is absolutely great. And it's still a bloody battle because I'll still see pictures and I'll go, oof, like that wasn't a flattering angle up. But then I just think, no, I have to, it, I'm, I'm definitely training myself how to think in like a, go down a positive pathway instead mm. of a negative. Because a knee-jerk reaction for years was just to like berate myself. When I think back now, like so harsh to myself, like you're disgust. I, I actually wrote on my mirror when I was younger, fat, in lipstick, so that every day I'd go to it and go, okay, you just remind yourself that that's what you are. Sorry. Oh, babes. You okay? Yeah. Come here, babes. Oh my hon. Okay. You okay? Yeah. When you look in the mirror and you go, I feel fat. Feeling fat is not, that's not a feeling. Mm. You can feel full or you can feel like bloated. Or empty. Or empty or hungry, but you can't feel fat. It's, a, it's an adjective of a, an, an aesthetic thing. And we, we demonize that word so much. But I think it's so amazing that you can sit here now and say this stuff. Yeah. And you've been liberated yeah. through this thing. And yeah. you should be so damn proud of yourself, hon. And I've spoken about it lots. Mm. And it is the best, most rewarding thing when I see girls comment, you know, this has helped me so much with my eating disorder. Thank you so much. And it's, it, it makes it so much more 
meaningful than just, oh, I'm an actor. Like, I think it's encouraged me to just strive to tell the most. I don't want to be involved in like shallow, frivolous, mm. superficial stories. Like I actually feel empowered now to say, if I, if I see a script, I'll, I feel like I can go, no, I don't want to tell this story. I don't think it's got a social conscience. Engaging all the time with the bigger picture and not just your own vanity and your own insecurities, it really, it just releases you. Yeah. Have you doubt with that such a game-changing year, would you say? I think it was so helpful that I went straight into another job mm. after sex education. I think if I'd have just had time and space to dwell on how big sex ed was, I would have just got really overwhelmed. I've definitely still got a lot to learn about retaining stuff for me. Mm. Like my instinct is to always kind of share. I'm a very expulsive person. Learning that that in itself is slightly a persona mm. and that in itself is actually a mask sometimes. Like sometimes the sharing is kind of covering up other shit. I'm trying to just realize that I don't have to give it my 110% energy in every encounter that I ever have because it's kind of impossible. To be so enthusiastic and so energetic every time I see someone who recognizes me from sex ed is quite draining. Yeah. Especially because she has the same name as me. Yes. So it's like, Amy, you're like, oh my God, there's no escape. <laughs> like it can be quite claustrophobic. Mm. And I think especially in these kind of situations, you learn that you are, you're kind of like number one ally as well, right? Yeah. Have you learned that? It's about trusting and giving yourself over to the right people and retaining yourself from the wrong because mm. I think it's hard to differentiate sometimes, especially because of sex education, because people come over to you and they tell you how much they love you. And it's like a stranger, but they don't love me. They love the character. the character. We are very intertwined because Amy feels like her thing that she has to offer is a big house for people to have parties in mm. and kind of this carefree, easy breezy attitude. And in season two, that's really challenged because she goes through this trauma and it's like, she doesn't know how to navigate because she can't hide that she's sad. So she just isolates herself because it's like, I don't want you to see me like this because then I'm I'm not like a, a, a valid person. I'm not valuable. There can be a tendency for me in my own life to do a little bit of that. Like if I'm not on top form, mm -hmm. I'd like, I'll just hide away. I'll just hide away because no one really wants to see me like this. But actually, if they're your friends and they love you, they do want to see you in whatever state. They will see you in your whole entirety. Yeah, exactly. But I think that's why it got confused for me. You imagine in your head, that's my thing now, is that I'm just really an open book. Yeah. But then you're like, I want to close the book. Mm. I just want to close the book for a little bit. But you feel too scared to, because then you're scared people are going to go, what's happened? Why have you done this? But actually, yeah. it's okay. It's giving yourself permission to not be um, happy all the time. You're allowed to have different emotions other than pure joy. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Because I found that in yeah. my own life. Yeah. Having to be like on all the time and everyone's like, you're the fun one. Exactly. And then when you don't want to be the fun one anymore, everyone's like, what's wrong with you? I know. And you're like, I'm absolutely fine. Give me 10 seconds. I know, you're quiet for a second. Mm. Oh my God, are you okay? Yeah. You're like, I am. I am okay. Well, you should be so damn proud of yourself, babe. Thank you. Because you've obviously been on this amazing journey and you got to this point when you're sat here as this really amazing, empowered woman yeah. in your own right. Thank so you. damn proud of you. Thank you. Babes, Love you. Come here. Love you.